Joe, for the first time on the show, outside of something crazy, we have not talked about the Vanderbilt Commodores on the show. So welcome, Vanderbilt Commodores, to Rafino and Joe show. Uh, Joe Bama coming off a massive win. Both of us put him number one in our power rankings this week. Um, highly impressive. Potentially the Heisman Trophy winner and Jalen Milrow. Uh, big time statement early in the season. They look really good offensively under Kalen DeBoer. Defensively made a lot of really good plays. I know that there's a strong, very, very strong likelihood that they're going to beat Vanderbilt. However, I just want to come out and say I'm proud of the way to see a team like Vanderbilt under Clark Lee playing the way that they're playing. So, look, they're a scrappy, scrappy team. And I don't think Alabama's got really anything to worry about here. However, you can't mess around with scrappy teams either. You got to go in there and take care of business. Right. Big big thing for me with, with this game – I actually think that Vanderbilt, Vander, the line on Bet Online is 22 and a half. It's somewhere in that range. I actually think that there's a chance that Vanderbilt, and a strong chance that Vanderbilt covers. And the reason why I'm bringing this up, I'm going to get to that in a second. A lot of times, a team like Alabama get a big emotional win, a statement win that is building your program, first year head coach, all of those things that is just so momentous for everything that you're accomp going to accomplish this year. More often than not, a lot of coaches will step up in that next game, and a lot of teams in the next game will play a little bit flatter than expected. They're not going to come out and completely smoke Vanderbilt. There are very, very few teams, even the greatest coaches in the history of college football, that will come out after a game like the one that they had against Georgia, playing against a walkover opponent, and not completely overlook them. So when I say that Vanderbilt covers, maybe they lose by only 17 points. And what I'm bringing this up for is that I don't want to hear anyone from the national perspective and other fan bases that if Alabama only beats Vanderbilt by 17 points or 20 points or something like that, or 14 points, I don't want to hear anybody trying to use that as a reason for why Alabama it was, was just really lucky in the game that they had against Georgia. I don't want to hear that. There are going to be people who come out of the woodwork and that use it like they do every single week oh, to disqualify yeah. Alabama in this situation. So I'm just oh, bringing this up. Happening. Yeah, I'm just bringing this up to say that what happens on Saturday is not indicative or reflective of how good Alabama is. If they kick the shit out of them, great. If this game is close, don't overreact like we did against South Florida. <sighs> When you come off of big emotional wins, historically in sports in general, even with Saban at times in his career, there is a propensity to let off of the gas a little bit. Now, you're coming off on an emotional win, but Joe, Joe you're coming off a very physical win. I mean, that was a tough team that you played and you beat. I just don't – like. The thing that I, I, I've thought about when we were going to talk about this game this week, the thing I keep coming back to that DeBoer has had some issues with, stay with me, when Washington would come off those big Oregon wins like they did last year, then we had a 24-21 win against Washington State, right? Like, I mean, right. there have been issues like that. Now, you could say, well, Blake, that was Cam Ward. That was where you were in a situation where that's a rivalry game. Very true, okay? But there have just been times where they've taken a little bit step back. Now, I don't know, Joe, if that happens because I think that they can I, – I, I think the message messaging this week is go take care of business. I don't know if this is true or not. It's probably not true, but there are like rat – uh, rat traps placed all over the locker room this week yeah, or whatever. Yeah, they've been talking about that. Okay, so how clever. That's a coach getting to his team. And I think that when you're already looking – like, Joe, that they won on a Saturday. We were seeing tweets come out on Sunday of route, of mouse traps being placed. And Kalen DeBoer basically sending to his team, let's move on. Bet online remains your top spot for all of your live betting action and contests. NFL, college football, UFC, NHL are all in full swing. 
Bet Online is your number one source for wagering news, odds, trends, and predictions with both desktop and mobile access at any time. Head to Bet Online today and use promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V for 50% off your first deposit. That is a 50% welcome bonus. Bet Online, where the game starts. Let's get ready for this week. Look, man, here's the truth. Against any scrappy team, take the logo off, off, off the side of their helmet. You just can't play around with them. And, yeah. and look, Joe, I'm going to be real with you. I'm interested to see how a guy that can move a little bit in Pavia, I, I'm really interested to see how Bama looks in that. You know, like, hey, right. you, you went up against Carson Beck, who's going to sit in the pocket and deliver the football to X, Y, and Z receiver. But Pavia is not going to do that. Look, like there's a really strong chance that he's going to run and try to get first downs. And I don't want Bama fans or national media, to your credit here, of saying this. Don't get freaked out by that. Running quarterbacks will vastly reduce how close that game is because they can continue to get first downs. So I just, I'm really interested, uh, very, very much interested to see how this game plays out uh, with Bama and Vandy. So Pavia, to elaborate on what we're talking about here, is – Probably the biggest catalyst for why I'm talking about how Vanderbilt could cover and make this game a little bit closer than everybody would anticipate. And, and anyone who doesn't know anything about Vanderbilt and doesn't know who he is, he is super mobile. And he is a headache, a huge headache for some of the best defenses in the country. And we saw that against Missouri. He kept them in the game. He kept finding ways to extend drives and to keep them in the game. And this is right now, actually, to this point, might be a weakness for Alabama that they let Byron Brown of UCF run on him. He had a successful game and that was why it was close for how far into the game it was, was because they couldn't corral him until the fourth quarter. So can you step in and realize, Hey, we didn't play as good as we needed to against Byron Brown. We're getting a chance to be tested again by another mobile quarterback. We're not going to let him break contain. We're not going to let him, step up in the pocket and scramble. We're going to spy him. We're going to go through the, per, the the process so that later on in the season that we're ready for those things. I know that a lot of people roll their eyes at that concept of, oh, this is an SEC opponent. Why the hell would you be treating it like a scrimmage? You kind of have to. You know, you kind of need to take away these opportunities to learn, to build, to get better, and a good head coach is going to use that. I want to really see them establish the running game. That Bama too, fans, yeah. Bama fans are mad at me. But, Joe, outside of that long run that they had by a running back last week, let's just call it what it is. I understand it's Georgia. Spare me, okay? Get, get up there and, and line up and run the football, too. You know, like, yeah. don't let Jalen Milrow be the only reason that you can run the football and you'll be fine. But I, I, I got to be real with you, man. I, I got Bama. I would take Bama to cover. I, I, don't, I don't think that they're going to have a lapse in judgment. I, I don't. The reason why – is because I do think Jalen Milrow's leadership and decision-making is vastly improved. You know, we talked about Jalen Milrow early in the show, and you brought up really good points about, look, man, he's, he's definitely better as a passer. He's definitely much better as a thrower. Joe, none of that, none of that is bigger to me than the decision-making that he's making on the football field. Okay? Mm -hmm. Like, that is, that is astronomically the biggest thing that he has improved. He's comfortable. He knows what he needs to do. DeBoer has orchestrated things like, hey, if this and this isn't here, check down, run. He, Joe, he's given him four options. He's given him two, and then he's given him a check down, and if you don't like any three of them, make your processes quick. You're too good not to get outside that pocket and run. That is how you – Joe, it's what Mike Denbrock did last year with Jaden. I'm going to get a check down. I'm going to get Brian Thomas Jr., Malik Neighbors out there. Run what you got to run. Jaden, they're not there. Go. You're too good to be sitting around here trying to make things happen. That's why I think that I, I think, look, man, we see this with Heisman contending type quarterbacks. They don't really take games off, Joe. You know what I mean? Like they normally go out there and bust the shit out of people. Mm. That's the reason I have a lot of confidence in that kid. That's why I think they're going to cover, they're going to win big here. And yeah. look, we got to take them very seriously. So I, I hate when I come out here and say, oh, Vandy's going to get blown out. I just like the way that I've seen Jalen Milrow play. Yeah, yeah. I right, continue last, to be impressed by him. 